Right, for you, those of you that don't know me, you're probably thinking, what are you doing on a Sunday afternoon in the cinema with a girl with her slippers on? And you're pretty sure you were going to a podcast launch, but you feel like you've just been to a concert. Well, <laughs> let me explain. Number one, anyone who knows me knows how clumsy I am. And along with the bag of nerves I'm feeling, if we accompany me in a pair of heels, there was talks I was going to have a handheld microphone. So I thought I'd save us all the drama and all of the accidents. And number two, so ever since I was young, I've always had this innate curiosity for life. I've always had felt like I have to be somewhere, like time was running out and I was chasing the idea of arriving at a destination of some kind. I always thought I just had to get there. And once I got there, my illusion would be that once I arrived at this destination, everything would be okay. I would be fixed, I would be happy, so I kept thinking, I've just got to get there. So my life, or the past 10 years as such, has been dedicated to finding the answer. Where was I meant to be? What was the quickest way in getting there? I quit my corporate job in 2014 and embarked on this quest, the meaning of life as such. My there. Anyway, the first place I visited was Haiti shortly after they had an earthquake. And I promise you guys, you would need a whole episode for me to talk about what I witnessed there. Cut it short, I somehow ended up bang smack in the middle of a Christian mission trip, praying up to six times a day, visiting church, and working tirelessly in the communities to try and rebuild in the wake of the earthquake through the aftermath. The destruction was simply indescribable, like nothing I've ever seen, nothing I saw on TV, and stuff that I just simply didn't think existed. People dying in the streets, no sanitation, and every night we would sleep in the orphanage. So, let's just say that's where my spiritual journey as such began to grow. Anyway, like I said, I would need a whole podcast to go into what I witnessed there in the orphanage. But after that, I threw myself into self-help book after self-help book. So much so that I genuinely have a storage unit for them somewhere. <laughs> so off I went next and I packed my bags and I went travelling. You see, part of my illusion in finding there was that I also had to find myself. So I went traveling for a year and hilariously enough, I think I genuinely thought I was gonna like bump into myself, put myself in the back of my backpack and off home I would go and it would be job done. I would have found myself. But obviously it didn't really work out like that. Like most of us, I felt like all of these accolades and milestones would be the end goal. And for me, motherhood I thought was the final call and it had been a dream of mine ever since I was a little girl. And when the novelty of that wore off, I thought, I've got to keep moving. I've still got to get there. There's only one thing left to do. This is to go on the Hoffman process. So for anyone who doesn't know what the Hoffman process is, it's a seven day residential retreat whereby you spend your days with 22 strangers, no watch, no clocks, no phone, no interaction with the outside world, and let's just call it pure inner work. So for me, Hoffman was the top of the mountain, right? I'd heard so much about it. When you go there, you leave, you get this Hoffman high and life's amazing. I thought, I fancy a bit of that. I'm gonna go. So off I went, I paid my money. You had to fill out the homework and there's a couple of guys here who went with me and the homework's like this big, it's no joke, right? Like nine, 12 hours. And I thought, this is great. This is the best money I've ever spent. I'm going to be fixed all in seven days. So off we went. And I'll never forget, we sat full circle and everyone's sitting there, 22 other people. And uh, we went round and we opened why we were there. These guys will probably remember it as well. And everyone was like scared, nervous and crying. And I thought, what's the matter with them? We're going to be out of here in seven days and everything's going to be all right. <laughs> I was so excited. I was going to be fixed. I was going to be healed. And in seven days, it'd all be over. And it was going to be magical. Anyway, seven days later, we sat in that full circle again. And literally, we went round and it's like we'd swap places. Everyone, it was like Jesus had come down, genuinely rebirthed them. They were so happy. They were like a choir of angels. They couldn't wait to leave. They had the Hoffman High. And I was like this in the corner, just fucked off. <laughs> I didn't get a Hoffman high. I didn't feel fixed. I felt like I'd been robbed of my money and I just wanted, to, I didn't even want to go back. So I left. 
Anyway, this is what happens when you fixate in life with an outcome, isn't it? But we'll get to that a little bit later. Anyway, I don't want to ruin the experience of you, those who are thinking of doing it. But I'm not doing a very good job of selling it anyway, am I? So you're probably not going to. But in those rooms, there is a lot of silence. A lot of figuring out how we can begin to live our lives with intent. I came to learn a lot about myself. How I knew I could hold people when they were most vulnerable. How I could help them. How I could help them feel seen and heard and validated. And how I oh so loved to talk. So... As part of our closing experience, we went around the room and we said, if you could do one thing and you can be one thing this time next year, what would it be? And from then, ladies and gentlemen, getting there was born. Also, strangely enough, or not so, today marks exactly one day that I graduated from the Hoffman process. And, sorry, the universe, God, that thing that's above and below me and walks next to me every day, whatever it is, has a strange old way of making things happen. So also in that room, I learned I wasn't the only one on a journey. We're all trying to get somewhere and whether that's fueled by a job title or simply good health. And there looks different to each and every one of us. So what I came to realise on making this season is we never really get there, right? But we're gonna come back to that bit. Now, instead of chasing my tail, figuring out where I was meant to be, I wanted to know where everyone else was going. Where were they headed? What insightful information could they leave me behind on their journey? So I wanted to create this space where you could almost dismantle life, right? So for me, I feel like mental health, etc., has all become really heavy and really weighted at the moment. And I'll probably get cancelled before I start. I'm fully aware of that, mm -hmm. right? But what I came to learn is like, these feelings, these emotions, this pain, this anxiety, it's life. It's not that. So, I also wanted to impart all the important stuff that I felt I'd learned in the last 10 years. A space where people from all walks of life can feel seen, heard, related, and provide my dark humor on pretty shitty scenarios that people might be going through. But most importantly, we shouldn't be taking it too seriously. After all, none of us are getting out this bit alive. <laughs> and what I also learned is it's not a one size fits all for everyone. And that's why my level of guests are so diverse. I remember the first time we went to film, I split up with an ex-boyfriend literally for the thousandth and one time. But I knew I was filming the next day and any of my mates in this room that know me, once I cry, I'm a blubbering, swollen mess and there's no going back. So I spent the whole night before trying not to cry, yeah? And we, I walked onto set, I was literally like this, and Nicola, who sits here today, I was like, I, was like, I can't do this, because I'd been trying not to cry and now I've not slept and now I was just frozen. And she said, but you're doing it. You're already doing it. There's a room filled with people who already believe in you. And um, you see, there's magic in your army. There's magic in your army, and you should never underestimate that because I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for my army. A small handful of people who have believed in me. My guests, many of which I had never met, but they believed in me, my mission, my vision. And guys, there is so much magic in that. So when I set out to do this show, I didn't want it to be a straight up high achievers podcast or a podcast just filled with verified people or influencers. No, the people on this show are doing the work and by doing the work, I don't mean just earning a load of money. No, they have an awareness to something that is way much larger than ourselves. They're determined to make a contribution and an impact in this world and they are living out their legacy, the changes they were born to make. <laughs> and to be honest, on reflection of this show, I never really thought that I would end up here at all. Um, I never really quite knew where I was going with it, but I guess that's life. We never really quite know where we're going with it. Literally, if I lay out my guests tonight, I feel like it's a game of guess who. What the hell has a 20-year-old male escort got in common with the ex-CBO of Google X? You'd think nothing but they do. Every single one of the stories has a theme of common resilience. Some of the most awful tragic events have happened to these people and their lives sat at a fork road and they chose to keep on moving, to believe in humanity and people 
again and again, to be hopeful that there's still a life to live. And most importantly, their stories are inspired by the changes they wish to make and the legacy they wish to leave behind. So the guests line up is a little bit like my personality. We probably don't know what we're going to get. It's a little bit chaotic, but just work with me here, guys. But literally, genuinely, the guests on this show has been led by my natural curiosity for life. Anyway, I'm going to start to wrap it up. But as much as this season has been for me, it's not. It's been for my son, Henry, because I want to teach him. No, in fact, I want to show him that if you have a dream in your heart, it really doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. So follow that little dream in your heart because one day there won't be enough time to. Like I said, I came to realise that now's not, there's not a place, but now is. So I'm not willing to push my dreams any further into the future and just hope that I'll get round to it. Because what's the point? All we really have is now. And I came to realise you are enough. You have always been enough and I want you all to know that. You don't have to chase a destination or a title of some kind to be enough. Each of you are enough exactly as you sit in this room today. So follow the dream in your heart because one day there really won't be enough time to. So just to finish up on part of my journey in getting there was to learn, which I probably learned the hard way, from Hoffman to not get attached with an outcome. So the last six months have been simply incredible. I have met the most amazing people. I've had the most thought-provoking, life-changing conversations. And all of the guests have allowed me to share the sacred story of their lives. I don't know if there'll be a season two. I hope so. I believe so. But what I've learned is this has been enough. This experience has been enough. In fact, it's been more than enough. This is getting there, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you like it. Woo!